In this week's stock market analysis, we're going to take a look at the S&P 500. I'm going to tell you why I'm seeing a uh, potential breakout is coming for the market. We're going to take a look at the market internals and the sentiment indicator to see what the market is telling us. And then I'm going to analyze the uh, SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, and give you some level to watch if the market decides to break out this coming week. Let's take a look at this multiple index chart here. There's a couple points that I want to point out. The first and foremost is the uh, indexes that have came back uh, above the uh, December 2018 low. So you see uh, the uh, New York Stock Exchange composite came back uh, came back up above that one once it broke too. Same thing here on the uh, New York, uh, I mean the uh, Dow Jones Industrial and likewise for the uh, S&P 500. Uh, we won't count the uh, NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ composite because it never came down uh, below the December 2018 low. Now, the other thing is, if you look at the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 did not come back uh, and got above the uh, 2018 low, the December 2018 low. Similarly, the uh, Dow Jones Transportation, right? So you got a couple of these uh, indexes sort of you know, not uh, in line with the uh, other major market indexes. And usually when we get a start of a up move, typically you see the uh, small cap leads, lead the way on the upward move and also lead the way on the downside, right? So right now the Russell 2000 seems to lag uh, behind the uh, major uh, index, the, the bigger index, the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. Those are what we call the... Uh, you know, the large cap index. Then the other thing that I want to highlight is the uh, Dow Jones Transportation. If you look at the Dow Jones Transportation here, and if we look at this pivot high, and also this pivot high, right, this pivot high here, it appears that uh, they are pretty much similar. But if we look at it closer on the uh, value, this point is actually a few points below uh, this particular high here. Okay, so this is uh, basically as a lower high. But if you look at the uh, Dow Jones Industrial, the Industrial actually made a higher high compared to uh, this pivot high. Right? So, so essentially, we're seeing a divergence between the Dow Jones Transportation and the Dow Jones Industrial. And when we see that in a Dow theory, basically, this is what we call a non-confirmation. So the Transportation and the Industrial is not moving in sync. And that usually is a uh, uh, is a warning sign, like a yellow flag. So we got to pay attention to that because uh, unless the transportation could come up and make a uh, new high along with the uh, Dow Jones, the next time when it pushes to a what we call a new recovery high, then uh, it could uh, uh, erase this uh, divergence. Let's take a look at the sentiment chart here uh, versus the uh, S&P 500. You can see the VIX uh, came down to uh, somewhere near the uh, 36 mark. Uh, you know, it came down from this uh, plus 80 uh, or 80 plus level. But notice that the put call ratio actually came back up on uh, Friday and went back above the uh, 0.75, sitting at 0.85. See, there was a uh, rally on Friday with the S&P 500 closing up uh, almost 39 point or 1.39 percent. So uh, this kind of tell you that uh, you know people are not buying this rally that much. You know the you know the people is basically buying protection here. Uh, hedges is coming in, although uh, the uh, fear index has not uh, reversed itself to go up yet. But I wouldn't be surprised next week we uh, might see that uh, kind of tilt back uh, up a little bit as the uh, put call ratio make its head, uh, you know, make its move back toward that uh, one level. So we'll keep an eye on that. Who knows, right? It could reverse back down and just kind of take uh, uh, take it below that 0.75. But right now, it uh, seems to be uh, telling me uh, that, uh, you know, some of the uh, hedging is, uh, is being bought here and uh, protection is being put on. And looking at the new high, new low on the uh, in this uh, New York Stock Exchange, you can see the uh, NYSE last Friday actually got 
nine more new low than new high. And uh, although the S&P 500, again, you know, rallied up uh, 1.39%, uh, gaining almost uh, 40 points. So uh, so that is not a uh, very uh, strong sign. Uh, it doesn't uh, indicate, uh, uh, you know, sort of strength here because you notice that the uh, the new high, new low did not get that expansion as it uh, making its move back up from this pivot high here. So uh, that's a sign of uh, caution here. All right, not much of a uh, strength here pushing up. So we'll take a look at the cash index a little bit closer because I do expect this S&P 500 market to make a little breakout move. It could be on the upside or it could be on the downside, but we're going to take a look at that a little bit closer uh, later on in this video. And by the way, if you like this video and find the content in this video to be useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That will help me a lot. And also, if uh, you are not a subscriber to my YouTube channel, click on the subscribe and also that notification icon because I'd be putting out another video in the next day or so on some of the stock that I'm watching. And uh, so be sure to have that notification uh, uh, on and you get notified and you get notified when I have that video uploaded. Here looking at the advanced decline. Remember uh, last week we were talking about this pivot high here. Extension the S&P 500 was making a higher high while the uh, AD line did not. And we're basically watching to see will the AD line move up and uh, take out this high here as the uh, S&P 500 continue to move up. But as you can see, it did not do that. Uh, the S&P 500 reversed and came back down. So that gave us a confirmation here that uh, put in this uh, lower high and that extension to give us the uh, uh, negative diversion and uh, gave us a clue that the uh, market was going to uh, pull back a little bit. And indeed, it did. Right? So we got that little pullback. Here we're looking at the uh, NASDAQ uh, new high, new low. The NASDAQ actually got 15 more new high than new low last Friday. Uh, and the, uh, you know, the index was up 1.68%. Uh, over 145 points, that's the NASDAQ uh, uh, 100. But again, you know, uh, uh, you look at here, uh, we did not see expansion on the new high, new low as this index, uh, you know, move up, you know, the 75 area all the way up to uh, over, uh, you know, 85 and above. So uh, we are not seeing the expansion just like the uh, the New York Stock Exchange on the uh, new high, new low. Yeah, so it's a little bit suspicious on uh, about this uh, recent uh, run up here on these um, uh, major market, you know, the uh, New York Stock Exchange and also the uh, NASDAQ. Here on the NASDAQ uh, on the AD line, the AD line actually uh, came up and made a uh, higher high while the uh, index is still uh, not uh, have not make a uh, higher high yet, so that is a little bit of a positive. And finally, looking at the S and P 500 against the up down volume ratio, and also the daily uh, advanced decline, you can see that the uh, uh, rally on Friday did not get much of a uh, strength on the up down volume. Also, you see a Measy 1.25, right? I mean, with this kind of move, when the market is up, you know, 1.4% or close to that and almost uh, 40 point on the S&P 500, one would expect a uh, much stronger uh, up-down ratio. You see uh, here, you know, if I uh, put a uh, candlestick chart back on here and we uh, take a look at uh, this right here, uh, you see uh, this... You know, this is a little bit of an NR7 day on the S&P 500. The up-down volume was, uh, you know, even uh, higher than the, on Friday. And look at the Friday's move. It's uh, much larger than, uh, you know, on uh, Wednesday. So um, that's a little bit of a cautionary sign also. Uh, we kind of have to uh, uh, keep an eye on that. And then the uh, look at the advanced decline on a daily basis that uh, just on that uh, on Friday, there's only 717 more advancer than decliner. And for a day that is of almost 40 point and 1.4% with only 717 more advancing issue than decliner is uh, not that strong of a market. 
Because with this kind of move, one would expect at least 1,500 or more of, uh, of answer over the decliner. So that is something also to be a little bit uh, concerning. Now looking at this cash index on the S&P 500, this is a monthly chart here. You can see that it's well back inside of this uh, megaphone here. Right? The uh, megaphone is essentially started out here back in uh, March uh, 2009 to the uh, high of uh, 2020 back in February. So you can see that uh, it is pretty much in the midpoint of this megaphone uh, so far for the month of uh, April. And it is uh, having a, a fairly strong April, a month of April. Remember when it started out, it started out below this megaphone channel here. And we thought it might be uh, start coming back down and back into this uh, Fibonacci retracement zone. But as it turned out, it is uh, gathering strength. Uh, well, at least the price action wise, uh, it is uh, seems to be uh, uh, moving back up. So we'll see how that play out. And here on the daily chart, you can see that uh, you know we were basically looking at this uh, Fibonacci swing and uh, looking for this thing to uh, uh, sort of come up to this 2900, this 1618. But uh, it did have a pullback a couple of weeks ago. We were basically looking for this thing to pull back down to this 100% and then get a bounce and push up to the uh, 161. But as it turned out, that was not the... Uh, the plan, the market have different idea. So you see that uh, you know it almost pushed up to that 161 and came back down and test this uh, you know this uh, low volume area here and got a rejection. So right now, remember we're basically looking at this uh, zone here, 2711 and 2641. So it came close to this 2711 and got a nice bounce. So right now it is, seems like. Uh, it might be uh, trying to uh, come up to this uh, 2912 here, the 161. But also with the uh, the internal and also the sentiment is kind of showing a little bit of weakness. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a, another pullback here before it continue its attempt toward the uh, 1618. So we'll see. Anything is possible. We're basically just reading the, what the market is telling us. And right now it seems to be telling us that you know, there could be a breakout coming, right? Whether it's uh, on the upside, on the downside, you know, that will be uh, sort of wait and see. And we're going to take a look at the uh, SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500. Let's take a look at the SPY, the ETF for the uh, S&P 500. You can see I have uh, basically have three composite uh, volume profile here. The uh, first one is uh, this composite just on a recent move here. Let me uh, zoom this in here. And you can see that the value area here, right? this is the value area, the aqua or the blue uh, shaded color here. And the uh, volume uh, is the, uh, basically it represents the 70% of the volume that is traded uh, within this price range. And you can see that it is uh, pretty much fluctuating in the within this uh, consolidation area, what we call balance area, right? And so, so essentially, I am looking for this thing to uh, either come up, right, break above this uh, value area, and move on to uh, this low volume area here, somewhere around 288.44, and see what it get a rejection and push us back in. Right. If it does, then we we'll basically have this what we call a look above and fail, and it's a uh, pretty much a similar uh, to this price action. Then I would be uh, looking to uh, play the downside to the uh, other side of this value area. But if it happened to uh, you know go and uh, break above this value area, then uh, and also move above this uh, low volume zone, then I essentially look for this thing to chop up to this 297.97, basically it's 298, right? That's basically what I'm looking at for uh, for that move. Otherwise, if it come down, come up here, or or just get stalled here and then start coming back down, then I'd be looking to see would it uh, get a bounce back up. Then I'd be uh, playing it back up to the other side of the, uh, you know, essentially the top end of this value area. But if it uh, break below, then uh, be uh, watching for setup 
to uh, play it back down to this uh, 264 area here in this uh, low volume zone. And then eventually it's going to come down to uh, this right here. Come down, come back down to this value area. Uh, this is the area that I'm looking at here. So uh, this right here at this volume, this balance area. Right, you can see that there are a lot of volume traded at this uh, price range. So if uh, this come back down, then I'd be uh, looking for the possibility of retracing back into this uh, uh, value area and to the uh, other side of this value area, the lower lower side of that. And uh, that value is somewhere around 245.50, I believe. Let me uh, zoom this in and then see what we uh, see here. Right. So it is 245.50. So that is the spy that I'm looking at, uh, kind of just uh, waiting to see would it be able to uh, break above this uh, value area and move up to this uh, essentially the 290 area and even possibly get up to this uh, 300. And that would represent somewhere around 3,000 on the e mini future or the S&P 500 cash index. And if it uh, come back down, then uh, we're basically looking at this range here, right? So it's basically like a uh, 265 area, somewhere around this 265 to the uh, 260 area as a point of control here, right? 260, 265. So essentially looking at this area to see once you get into here, that'd be uh, basically looking for a possible retracement back into this value area. So there you have it, looking at the SPY here, you know, essentially it been uh, consolidating for uh, quite a few weeks ever since uh, the beginning of April. And uh, essentially, uh, you know, kind of uh, consolidating in this area of uh, somewhere up at the uh, 280, uh, uh, 85 area down to the uh, 270 ish uh, area. So uh, with the uh, VIX, it's still sitting at a uh, elevated level near the 40, although it came down, uh, you know, quite a bit from the uh, 80 plus. But also with the put call ratio start creeping back up toward the uh, the nine and the one level, then uh, you know the, uh, that tells me that the market is getting ready to uh, to come down once again because a lot of the uh, professional is basically buying protection and putting up on uh, putting uh, some uh, hedges on to uh, protect their uh, positions. And then if you look at the uh, new high, new low, even though the uh, index have come off the uh, March 23rd low, but the uh, new high, new low did not expand on the upside. It's basically been pretty much near it as the neutral line near uh, the uh, zero mark. So uh, with that, I'm kind of leaning toward the downside for it to come down to test that 260 level. If it cannot hold that 260 level, I expect it to come back down to possibly to that 245 area. So yes, there is a possibility for it to uh, break out to the upside and possibly move up to that uh, 300 on the SPY extension, the 3000 uh, level for the S&P 500. But with the internal and the sentiment, uh, indicator, it seems to be more biasing on a breakdown rather than a breakout. So that's what I'm watching for the coming week. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree in the comment below and let me know what you think. So good luck and uh, stay safe. Keep that social distancing. Keep everybody safe and keep yourself safe.